Hi and welcome back. So in the last video we took a look at object snaps and uh, there's a couple more details to that that I wanted to go over before we get to the next subject. And uh, so to demonstrate this I'm going to go ahead and just create a, a box and a sphere and again to to get to the sphere you just simply left click and hold it for a second and uh, and that will fly out so you can select the sphere tool and I'm going to go ahead and just create a box and a sphere and then the uh, sort of one dimension or two dimensional equivalents of those the box and the circle and so with snapping we have options for um, snapping to actual uh, three-dimensional shapes so in this case I can snap to either of these by um, starting a polyline command for instance and let's go down here and I'm going to turn on my my end snap my mid snap and my center snap and again as I as I get close to the midpoint of this um, square here or this rectangle or the end point I'm snapping so if I wanted to start my line from there for instance um, as I move towards the the box you'll notice that I'm now snapping to the bottom of the box corner or the top of the box corner or that corner of the box etc etc I can snap to the mid point for instance and then come back down again and snap again to my square and so that that is now snapped both there and on the square down here you'll also notice that uh, we can snap to uh, the sphere but it, it won't actually pick up a snap until we get close to this darker area right here this this is like a seam uh, you can picture that almost as a line that only uh, goes through half of the of the sphere so you can see it at the bottom and at the top and it sort of curves around and uh, so as I get close to that I have an option for a center snap for instance if I wanted to start my line from there and then go to let's say the center of this circle right here and end the command um, you won't actually see through that sphere unless you go into wireframe and you can see now that that line starts at the center of that sphere so uh, snapping works both on two-dimensional and three-dimensional objects where this might be useful is for instance if we were to uh, we might want to use some of this geometry to create lines in space so for instance if I start up my polyline again I could snap from the endpoint here to the endpoint there to there to there and complete my my set of polylines and now I can select that and drag it out and that's an independent uh, element from what I originally drew it on so you can you can use snaps uh, and geometry in general to set up guides or some sort of relationship among these parts to then extract geometry from from those relationships so now go, let's go t and take a look at how to rotate things I'm going to um, just get rid of everything and go into my top viewport and I'm gonna start off by just drawing a a box and a circle and maybe we'll add a polyline So the rotate command uh, it's it's found under the transform menu. So you have rotate. Uh, you can also just left click on this icon here, and that'll start the rotate command. And it asks me to select an object to rotate. Um, I'm going to disable my snaps for a second, and so I select a line, for instance, and it asks me to press enter when done. So I'm just going to right click to do that and now it's asking me for the center of rotation and that center could be anywhere it, it, it doesn't have to be on the object it could be out here somewhere for instance so I, I left click to set the first point and that's my axis of rotation that's probably the most crucial part of this whole command uh, once I've set that I now can sort of decide where I want to start from and where I want to finish the rotation at and when I'm done I'm uh, I've rotated that that element just going to undo that. You can also uh, run this same command with object snaps. So I'm going to enable my object snaps and um, I'm just going to have my end snap 
selected for now. So again, it's asking me for the object to rotate. I'm going to select my line, press enter, and now it's asking for the center of rotation. Well, I want, let's say, the center of rotation, I might want it to be right here at the very end of this line, so it rotates around its end point. So I've just left clicked to set that, and as I'm pulling out, this is just sort of a preview. It doesn't matter how big I make this circle or how small. I'm going to be rotating, and now I simply left click to start the rotation, and again, left click to end the rotation. The center of rotation doesn't have to be on the object. It can be on another object, for instance. I might want to rotate this around the corner of this square, for instance, or this rectangle. So if I set that as my origin, uh, I'm now now free to rotate that way. I can also use my shift key to constrain my rotation, uh, much like we've already seen in other commands, and that can be helpful in some situations. You can also choose to rotate multiple objects, so if I wanted to select both of these by hitting the shift key while I'm left clicking to select them both, I now rerun that rotation command, and let's say this time I want to use a center snap, and I'm going to use the center of the circle as the uh, the axis of rotation. Now when I start my rotation, they're both rotating around that circle. I'm going to um, just get these out of the way for a second, and I want to show you in the three views what happens when I rotate. So I, I, again, I'm going to select this rectangle as the object I want to rotate. We've been doing this in top view so far. The top and perspective view work the same way. So when I start my rotation in, in a perspective view, it's rotating uh, on this construction plane that you see with the grid. So if I were to start it there and you're, you're following in perspective or in top view, I'm rotating essentially the same way in both. If I were to start this command, Let's say that I want to rotate this uh, this rectangle along this edge, this bottom edge here. I would um, I would need to select that edge as my axis of rotation, and the viewport that gives me that view is this right view down here. So I'm just going to exit that command for a second, so you can see um, that is what I'm looking at right now, right down here in my right viewport. So if I wanted to rotate from within my right viewport, I'm going to start that command again, and you can see I still have my object snap selected, that's fine. So I'm going to use the end point of that rectangle as my origin, and now I'm rotating, and you can see the preview in that perspective view. So if I were to drop it right there, I've just rotated off of my perspective uh, ground plane, and I've done that in my right viewport. Rerun that command again, and this time I'm going to use my front viewport, and my front viewport is looking at the object like this. So um, the front viewport always has the green line coming towards it, the right viewport always has the red line coming towards it. So in the front viewport, if I wanted to use a point up here, for instance, it doesn't have to be on the object, it could be out here in, in space. If I were to set my 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 uh, uh, origin point, you can see in perspective, I'm getting a preview now of where that origin point is. And as I switch into my front view now, I'm going to set and click it. So I'm dragging up, and now in perspective, you can see what's happened to that rectangle. So this is a very uh, useful tool. You probably won't be using it so much in front and right viewport, but you'll certainly be using it a lot in the top and perspective views. I'll see you at the next video.